Welcome back everyone to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. In this episode, we go ahead and start putting together all of those style components into our register modal step one that we can actually take in some user in. So let's go ahead and hop into VS Code and I'll show you guys how we do it. So now we can actually start putting all of this together and kind of getting things to, to actually work, so to speak. So what we want to go ahead and do next is create our actual component that's gonna be imported into our landing page or, or not necessarily a landing page, but our modal. We don't need any of this. So let's go ahead and make that validated input. So we're gonna say new file. We're gonna call this validated input.tsx. And hopefully everything likes to play nice. RF, RFAC. Go ahead and do that. And we're good to go. So we are going to need to use state and use effect. Because we are going to be determining some things. And we also are going to want to go ahead and import those styled components. So let's go ahead and import styled input box and styled input label. So we can use those. And now let's go ahead and make an interface inside of our file here. So we're going to say interface. This is not a global interface. It just belongs to this guy. It's going to be validated user input props. And this is gonna take a name string. It's going to take a label string. Name and label could probably be the same thing, but it's fine. It's gonna take an error message to display whenever there's an error. That's also a string. It's gonna take in a validator. This is going to be a, um, it, this is going to be a function. It's going to take in a value of string and it's going to return boolean true or false, whether or not the string is valid. We're going to have a change value. This will probably get gone eventually. I don't know, we'll see how we actually implement our Redux. It's gonna react.change event on a HTML input element. And then finally, this is going to return void because you're gonna set state. And then finally, we're going to have an optional attributes question mark. And this can be a record, which is just an object in um, TypeScript. We'll have a string for the key. And then the value can be a string, a number, or a Boolean. So what this is saying is we want to be able to possibly pass a record of values or an object to the attribute. And we want the key value pair to be a string and a string, string, string number, string Boolean. So what this is essentially gonna say is that we can say we have an attribute for max length and we can set that equal to number. We can have an attribute for read only. We can have an attribute for required, stuff like that. So that is good to go. So now we actually need to set up our component. So we're going to go ahead and call this react.function component. This is going to take in that validated user input prop. And we need to go ahead and break apart these props. So we're going to go ahead and say name, whoops, name, label, um, error message. We're going to say validator. We're going to say change value and we're going to say attributes. Of course, attributes our are optional. Oh, that should be an S. Cool, cool. And we're good to go. Now we can start making our validated input. So we're going to keep the div here. We're going to go ahead and give the div a class name equal to, and we're going to call this validated dash input. And inside here, we're going to take our styled input box we're going to say active is equal to false to start and we're going to say valid is equal to true to start save it's probably going to air out for the time being because we need um, a child in here so the child is going to be the styled input label and this is going to start out with the color equal to gray and we'll change the color as we go Active will also be false to start out. And we're probably going to change things up a little bit. Valid will start equal to true. And finally, um, we'll have our label in here. Cool. Now we'll actually have the input 
inside of here that takes in the the value so input class name is going to be equal to validated whoops validated input value and inside of this input we're going to have a couple things so we're going to have an on focus so whenever we click on it this is just going to be nothing for the time being we're going to have an on blur so this is whenever we click off of it so we'll say this is nothing for the time being we're also going to have an on change this is just going to be nothing for the time being and then what we're also going to do we need equal we'll also say like this dot 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 attributes and this will kind of add attributes that we want extra so again we're not going to have all of that for the time being we'll add it later uh, but that's just for kind of peace of mind for if we ever need it later on so finally we're going to go ahead and add one more span outside the styled input box and this is just going to have the error message so for the time being um i guess what we could say is um never mind we don't have an actual this doesn't hold any state for the time being so we're not going to do that right now um but now we technically have that so now let's go ahead and make some css import the css and then just put some of that inside of our register form so i'm going to go ahead and import the i'll put it down below actually i like putting it below this so we're import dot slash and this is going to be um validated input.css and let's go ahead and create that file so new file validated input.css all right so we're just going to do some very basic css we're going to throw some value we're going to throw some input fields into our register form one and we're going to call that a day so we're going to go ahead and say dot validated dash input and inside here we're just going to have a height of fit content for the time being this can be changed later and a width of 100 percent next we're going to have our validated user or validated input value so here we're going to have position absolute we're going to have bottom is going to be five pixels we're going to have left 10 pixels we're going to have width to 90 percent we're going to have line height equal to 26 pixels oh that should be 26 we're going to have our font size to 24 pixels we're going to have our font weight to 300 we're going to have background color and this is going to be an rgba pretty sure this is just white so i'm just going to use white um because 256 yeah that's just white um and then we're going to have our border none and padding zero there's probably a different way or other ways to kind of position this but with what we're doing we just want it kind of centered on the bottom right there so that's fine and then finally we're gonna have a focus so dot validated input value colon focus so this is whenever you click on it this is what caused the annoying outline to pop up so we're going to say outline none and we're going to say border none save so now that is all good to go i hope that it's still compiling let's see go to this bash everything compiled fine so we're good there what we need to do now is actually import this into our register form so if we get rid of this for the time being open up our um, features go into components go into register form one and open this up go ahead and get rid of this so now we're going to get rid of these text inputs i, I probably could have just renamed them but it's fine uh, I didn't think I didn't think that part through very well. So we are going to go ahead and import our validated input from here. And instead of using 
these text inputs. We're going to use a validated input. So this is going to need a few things. First, we need a name. So the first name is going to be first. This should be a string. First name. The label is going to equal to first. This is what Twitter uses. We're going to have our error message. The error message is going to equal please enter your name because this is what Twitter's error message is. So we go back to Twitter. Actually, I guess it says, what's your name? So we can actually say, what's your name? Next, we'll have a change value. So this is just going to be our update user. And then finally, we're going to have a validator. So this is just going to uh, return true for the time being. Later on, we will fix this up to actually return something and then we'll have our closed value. So now we can go ahead and copy and paste this again. So now this will be last name. Label will be last. We'll have what's your name still update user is fine. And then finally, we'll have one more for email. So this will be email label will be email. This will be, please, what's your email? Or actually, this must say enter a valid email. I think that's technically what they say. So if we switch this to email, please enter a valid email. Email. So please, they're really nice. Please enter a valid email. And that one's good. And voila. So save. Let's see, what did I miss? So that's closed. That's closed. That's closed. Um, div has no corresponding close tag. It's right here, is it not? So let me debug and see. Oh shoot, I accidentally copy pasted this. There we go, save. Now, theoretically, if we open up here. Um, what's going on? So the label didn't quite work. It might be because it's not active. Oh, I know what happened. We need to put the opacity to zero. So that's why we had the RGBA. So we'll say RGBA and we'll say, whoops, 256, 256, 256. I forgot this needs to have opacity zero. Um, and we might also want to put the Z index up a little bit. So maybe we'll say Z index, uh, to five or something that way we can actually click on it. But now you can see we have first, last, whatever. We might want to make that a little bit darker, but all we have to do now is do the logic to actually get it so that it makes it smaller, which we'll work on next. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.